بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So my dear beloved Muhammad, I want to teach you about my secrets and I want to reveal my plenitude to you in this revelation. I want to give you the key for all of these meanings and I want you to realize all these meanings within you. This is a reminder or this is a story of the mercy of thy Lord unto his servant Zachariah. This is a story. This is the story of Your brother Zachariah, the slave of Allah, the servant of Allah, Zachariah, when he got touched by the Rahmah, by the mercy of thy Lord. Also, this is the story how your brother Zachariah got connected and remembered the Rahmah of thy Lord. ذكر رحمة ربه عبده عبده زكريا This is a reminder of that story. And I want you to take this reminder and keep reminding yourself about it. It's not a moment that was lost or that was meant to be lost in the time and space. Rather, it is a, a sacred moment that is meant to live forever and that is meant to shape the human relationship with the divine and that is meant to teach the humans how to deal with God and how to live with God. A reminder of the mercy of thy Lord unto his servant Zachariah. When he cried out to his Lord with a seeker to cry. When he cried out to his Lord with a seeker to cry. When he prayed his Lord secretly. God is teaching us here how to pray, how to talk to him. He cried out to his Lord with a seeker to cry. They say secret. Even the angels could not, could not hear it could not write it. But people, they can cry to their Lord and talk to their Lord in different, in different levels of intimacy. The highest degree of intimacy when you talk to your Lord without any creation, knowing what you are, what you are saying. He cried out to his Lord with a seeker to cry. Because he was the, because he was the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he was the intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, my Lord, 
Verily my bones have grown feeble, and my head glistens with white hair. And in calling upon thee, my Lord, I have never been wretched. Truly I fear my relatives after me, and my wife is barren, so grant me from thy presence an heir or a successor who will inherit from me and inherit from the house of Jacob and make him my Lord well pleasing. This was the prayer. A prayer that one of the servants of God made or would say received because before talking to the Lord you need to receive the permission and you need to receive your own prayer we do not talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our own words we can only talk to God with divine words we cannot approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our own qualities we can only approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his qualities so when he gives us the permission to approach him he gives us his qualities and then we can embrace his qualities and when he gives us the permission to talk to him he gives us his words and he puts them in our mouth and he stirs our heart with these words and he puts them on, on our tongue and then we talk to him with these words that's why they said if you find yourself praying talking to God don't worry about the answer because the fact that he has the fact that God has given you the words of the prayers that means he has already accepted your prayers hadn't he allowed hadn't he wanted to answer your prayers he wouldn't have put them on your mouth on your tongue in your mouth on your tongue Hadn't he wanted to accept your prayers, he wouldn't have inspired you with these prayers. The prayers are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a time of opening. We spoke, we, yes, we spoke yesterday about opening up to the moment. So this is the dhikr rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. It's a moment of opening up to a higher level of the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakariya alayhi salam is a prophet and he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who better than he knows the Rahmah, the mercy, the love, the closeness, the intimacy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who better than he would know how to relate to God. Who better than he would know the power of God or about the, the power of God, the unlimited power of God. But there are levels. There are levels of knowledge. There are levels of consciousness. There are levels of opening up. We open up to the Rahmah of God and we keep opening up to this Rahmah. We keep ascending in this opening up we keep ascending in our understanding and we keep ascending in our hmm, openness and this moment when Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salam opened, opened up to the divine is a moment to, to be celebrated and was meant to live forever, was meant to be celebrated forever. Dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. When he cried to his Lord and God recorded this prayer, he recorded this prayer for us because it is meant to live forever. And the prayer was 
My Lord, verily my bones have grown feeble, and my head glistens with white hair. And in calling upon thee, my Lord, I have never been wretched. Truly I fear my relatives after me, and my wife is barren. So grant me from you, or grant me from thy presence, an heir. Who will inherit from me, and inherit from the house of Jacob, and make him, my Lord, well-pleasing. He started describing his feebleness and the lack of means. He started describing, my Lord, I'm very weak. God loves to see his servant, to see his slave acknowledging and realizing his full dependence or her full dependence to him, his weakness or her weakness in front of him. It's an art when we talk to God to show our weakness. But also, Zachariah here is talking about his age. And when he says, my bones have grown feeble, that means I have no strength left. I reached a very old age. And my head glistens with white hair. So from my side, I cannot hope to be a father anymore. One plus one equal two. I cannot be a father anymore. It's a lost case. In the worldly transaction, when we reach a certain level of helplessness or we reach a certain level of weakness, that brings what? That brings despair. But in the world of transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you do not find the means around you, that opens actually the door of, of hope in God and God alone, because God is not in need for causes to realize anything. He's able to do things with cause or without cause. Causes, call them causes, right? Or means. Means for the slaves of God are like chains. And when they lose means, they get free from chains. So now they can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all uh, freedom, in full freedom, full liberty. They know fully that there isn't anything that they can do about this thing. And that's their, that's their urus, that's their, these are their best moments with God when they realize that they cannot have, they don't have anything in their hands to be done anymore. Whatever they could do, they have done, but now there isn't anything to be done. They love these moments when God alone is able, literally, when God alone is able to do anything. They love these moments. They celebrate these moments. So when he saw something, Sayyidina Zakaria, and he received a message from God. 
They received the message from God through what? Through witnessing Maryam and hearing a word from Maryam. Listening to something, a teaching from Maryam. Maryam alayhi salam was a little girl at that time. And he adopted her to be admitted into the temple. And she had a mihrab. He built for her a small house made of wood. And she was praying there. She was in meditation there. And he entered the first day. And he found that she had food. He, was, he would bring food for her. And he would found that she has food already. And he would tell her, Maryam, who brought this for you? And she would repeat, she would just say, it is from God. Because when she was coming with him the first day, and he told her that I'm going, now you are going to live in the temple. And then she asked him, so who is going to feed me? If I'm going to be separated from my mother, who is going to, to feed me? He told her one word. He told her, God will feed you. God will give you. God is all that you need. God will give you all what you need. And God is all that you need. That's it. She took the teaching. She realized it. She embraced it. And she embodied it. After that, whenever he comes bringing food, he finds food. And he asks her, Maryam, who gave you this? And she would say, Huwa min indillah. This is from God. And Zachariah, embracing that moment, embracing and, and, and embracing that moment, that situation, him bringing food and you are not needed, you are not needed. The table is already served. Embracing that moment of feeling not needed and embracing that moment of seeing Maryam having everything she needs without any wasita, without any means, without any medium, without any mediator, God directly provided for her. And embracing that song of certitude, certitude coming from Maryam again and again, huwa min andillah. This is from God alone. This is from God alone. This is from God. And he kept coming day after day and asking her the same question again, asking her the same question again, not because he was doubting, but because it was the best song he would ever, uh, he would ever hope to listen to, coming from a pure heart. It's a song. Uh, it's a reality. And one time, one time it reached the peak, that joy of his heart, the joy of his heart, or we, call, we can call it the ecstasy. His ecstasy reached the peak with that drink that Maryam was serving him. What Sheikh Maryam was speaking about yesterday, the Tawheed, the Sufis, they call it the wine of Tawheed. It's wine. It makes you lose your, your mind. It makes you lose your calculator. That's the mind. Uh, it make, because God does not mind. God does not mind. Does not mind giving the one who deserves what he does, the one who does not deserve what he does not deserve. God does not mind. So Maryam kept serving him cup after cup, this drink of oneness. It is from God and God alone. It is from God and God alone. Huwa min indillah. This is from God. This is coming from God. God is all that I need. God is all that you need. Time after time, time after time, time after time, Zachariah enjoying this song. Song 
again and again, again and again, again and again, the ecstasy of Zachariah reached the peak. And now he's fully drunk of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hunalika. At that moment, da'a Zakariya Rabba. At that moment and at that place and in that place, he decided to pray at that moment and in that place. He did not go somewhere else. He decided to pray in the place, in the mihrab, in the humble temple, the humble place, a uh, house of prayers or house of worship of Maryam It was a, a small niche, small hmm, hut made of wood that he made himself with his own hands to Maryam alayhi salam so she could she could pray in and live in actually bless you so he rahamukumullah so at that stage or at that station hunalika when he reached that level when he reached that station spiritual station or emotional station in that physical place, in that moment, Hunalika, Da'a Zakariya Rabba. He spoke to his Lord. And we have the record of this prayer. Diseases and addiction 